In this lesson, we are going to discuss or recall some terms related to circles. Let's have some definitions to recall. A closed plane whose every point is equidistant from a point within the curve is what we call the circle. So, ito yung definition ng circle. Meron tayong isang fixed point wherein lahat ng point dun sa plane na yun is equidistant from a fixed point. Next is, the given point described in the definition of the circle or yung fixed point kung saan equidistant lahat ng point dun sa curve of the circle is what we call the center. So, yung center na yun, yan yung fixed point. So, from those definitions, a circle is the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a given point called the center of the circle. So, here in our example, we have here a circle wherein this point is the center of the circle. And all of this point or yung lahat ng point dito sa curve ng circle ay may equal distance from this center. And also, we can name the circle according to its center. So, kung ano yung name ng center, yun din yung kanyang pangalan. So, this is circle A or we can use the symbol uh, this one, circle na may dot sa gitna, it means that is a circle. Next, let's have another definition. We have the length around the circle. Length around the circle or length around the polygon. And since circle is not a polygon because it composed of curved lines, it means we have another name for this that is the circumference. To solve for the circumference of a circle, we have some formulas that we need to remember. So it is the circumference of a circle is twice the product of pi and radius. So we have c is equal to 2 pi r. That will be our formula in getting the circumference of a circle. Next, we have area of a circle that is the product of pi and square of the radius. You need to square the radius and multiply it by pi or area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. Our next term is a segment whose endpoints are points on the circle. So, this is a segment wherein yung kanyang dalawang dulo is a point or any two points on the circle. That is what we call the chord of the circle. Since a chord is a segment whose endpoints are points on the circle, ibig sabihin dito sa circle na to, we can name two chord. We have here one endpoint and another endpoint. And then if we connect these two points, this will be called chord CD. And chord CD. And here naman, we have endpoint E and F. So if we connect these two points, that will be chord EF. Next term is, this is a chord passing through the center of the circle. So ibig sabihin, chord din siya. Kaya lang ang pinagkaiba niya, it should pass to the center of the circle. That is what we call the diameter. Since diameter is a special chord wherein it should pass the center of the circle, here in the circle A, we have diameter BC. So B is an endpoint and C is also an endpoint within the circle. So, pag kinonect natin siya, it will create a line segment and it will pass through the center. Ayan, dumaan siya sa center. It means BC is a diameter. So, that is an example in this figure. Another term is a segment whose endpoints are the center and a point on the circle. So, ang endpoint naman ng segment na to ay yung center mismo ng circle at any point on the circle. That is what we call the radius. So, here, the segment joining the center to a point on the circle is the radius of the circle. 
So, dito sa bilog na to, we have here the center and one point on the circle. If we connect these two points, this will create a radius. This is a line segment AH or radius AH. Dito naman sa kabila, we have center and point G. If we connect this two point, it will create another radius which is radius AG. So, ayan yung example natin. We have radius AG or radius AH. And we have here another note. Two circles are congruent if they have the same radius measurement. So, yung dalawang circle daw ay congruent kapag ang measurement ng radius nila ay parehas na parehas. Let's have another note here. The length of a diameter is twice the length of the radius. Ibig sabihin, yung sukat ng diameter natin ay doble ng sukat ng radius. Then, the length of a radius is half the length of the diameter. Yung length naman ng radius ay kalahati lang ng length ng diameter. So, dito sa figure na to, meron tayong diameter BC at may radius tayong AC and AB. So, kung mapapansin, pag in mo si AB at saka si AC, it will compose of a diameter BC. So, kung ang AC natin ay 5, ang AB natin is 5 also, kaya ang BC natin is 10. Next term is a line which intersect the circle at exactly one point. So, ibig sabihin ito ay line, any line na dadaan sa circle sa isang point lamang or exactly one point. That is what we call tangent line. Here in this example, we have here a circle A and we have another line here. This is a tangent line which touches the circle at point B. This point is what we call the point of tangency. Isang beses lang siya didikit sa circle wherein didikit siya dun sa point B. And point B is the point of tangency. Another term is a line which intersect the circle at two points. So, kanina kung sa tangent line dadaan lang sa eh, circle or didikit lang sa circle at only one point, dito naman, magpa-pass through siya sa circle at exactly two point. Or mag intersect siya sa circle at exactly two point. That is what we called secant line or it sounds like second. Kaya secant line. So, in this figure, ito yung circle M. Meron tayong isang second line. Dumaan siya sa point A at saka point B. Dalawang beses siyang dumaan sa circle or nag-pass through sa circle. So, it means this line AB is a second line. Next term that we need to recall is an arc. Arc, ayan, kurba is the distance between any two points on the circumference of a circle. Kanina ang circumference, lahat ng distance around the circle. Yan yung circumference. So, dito sa arc na to, part lang siya ng circumference. So, meron kang dalawang point na magdedetermine sa kanya. This is what we call arc KL. We can also name an arc by means of three points, wherein yung two are the end points of the arc, and the third one lies in between them. So, kagaya nito, we have arc KXL. KXL, arc KXL. Yung K tsaka L, these are the end point of the arc. Tapos yung X na yan, that is the point between K and L. Next is, an arc divide the circle into two parts. The smaller arc is called the minor arc and the larger one is called the major arc. Or yung pinakasimple dito is, kapag ka ang isang arc ay less than 180 degrees, that is what we call minor arc. This is KXL. Arc KXL is a minor arc kasi ang measure niya ay less than 180 degrees. Kapag ka naman 
mas mataas sa 180 degrees or greater than 180 degrees ang measurement ng isang arc. Ang tawag naman sa kanya is major arc. Or here we have KYL or arc KYL. This is a major arc. Here an example of an arc. Ito yung bahaghari o yung rainbow. This is an arc. We have also here an arc then arc. Ito siguro yung entrance ng isang pintuan. Hindi lang natin ma-zoom or let's say ito yung tunnel. Arc yun. Let's have another definition. An arc with a measure of 180 is a, syempre that is a semicircle. So, kanina pag minor less than 180, pag major greater than 180. So, kapag equal to 180, that is a semicircle or semicircle. Circle is formed kapag may drinawing tayong diameter. So, kung mag di may diameter, it will cut the circle into two parts. We have the semicircle DSE at saka semicircle DRE. So, ang measurement ng arc ng DSE ay 180, same with DRE. Let's have another thing to recall. This is central angle. From the word central or center, yung vertex ng angle na na-form inside the circle is the center of the circle. Kaya central angle. This is central angle 1. Kapag ka may pangalan tong cent uh, circle na to, yung center na to, which is C, this is central angle ACB. And ang measurement ng angle na to is 60 degrees. Or we should say, a central angle is an angle in the circle whose vertex is the center of the circle. So take nota from the word central, we have center must be the vertex of the angle. Another angle related to circle is inscribed angle. So this angle in the circle whose vertex is on the circle and whose side contains chords of the circle. Chords or it can be contains diameter of the circle. So dito sa figure na to, we have angle EDF kasi ang kanyang vertex is on the circle tapos yung kanyang side ay chord of a circle. So, yung side can also be a diameter. So, huwag kayo mga confused doon because um, diameter is also a chord. Let's try this exercise. Label the following to their proper notation and give example. Item 1 is already given. So, sa item 1, meron tayo ditong minor arc. So, itong arc DA or AD is a minor arc kasi ang measurement niya ay less than 180 degrees. Sa number 2 naman, this is a central central angle. So, central angle dahil ang kanyang center ay nasa, or vertex rather, ay nasa center of the circle. Kaya that is a central angle. We have the angle A B, C or pwede rin siyang tawaging angle C, B, A Next, sa number 3 naman ang tinutukoy niya is this line pwedeng line or yung diameter pwedeng diameter DC or pwede namang secant DC So, ang gamitin na lang natin is we have secant and that is secant DC. That is a line DC. Next, number 4. Ang tinutukoy naman niya is a chord. Chord AC. Then, next, sa number 5. Since simula sa D hanggang A yung kanyang describe, Pero, dadaan siya sa C, syempre. That is major arc. Major arc. Dahil ang measurement niya ay greater than 180. Or we have DCA. Arc DCA. 
And on number 6, this is an inscribed angle. Inscribed angle dahil ang vertex niya is on the circle. So that is angle ACD. Angle ACD or angle DCA. Okay, so that's all.